Hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar, How the Right Vehicle Can Save Your Operational Costs. I'm Katie Long from Wunder Mobility. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the e-moped uh, sharing operator business from a hardware perspective. Um, I'm joined today by Jana Bartels, who is business owner of vehicles at Wunder Mobility, and Markus Brahma, who is the head of technical management at EMI. And so EMI is the pioneer for electric scooter sharing in Germany. They currently have a fleet of over 2000 vehicles across five cities, which is very impressive. <laughs> and um, they were most recently acquired by GoToGlobal, as some of you might have re read in the news. Um, so today's topic is how the right vehicle can save your operational costs. And um, we're gonna talk about how EMI was one of the first on the market to launch a new sharing ready e-moped and how this um, led to them being able to cut operational costs um, within a few months. So um, we're really happy to have you both here today. Um, Marcus, could you tell us a little bit about your role at EMI? Um, yeah, for sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Marcus. And as already mentioned, I'm the head of technical management at EMI. Um, I'm at EMI Science more than five years. So my experience about this topic is quite a lot during this time. And um, my team and I are responsible for the product development on the hardware side, a little parts of the software side as well, and for the logistic and warranty side. So at every my departments are working nearly with all other departments together. And um, you can say we are something like one part of the crew between our internal departments. And we are also the contact for all our external stakeholders too. So that's the reason we are always in close contact, for example, with Wunder Mobility regarding the product um, in order to make improvements, but also to resolve any errors that arise. Mm -hmm. Great. And Jana, you um, are head of vehicles at Wunder Mobility. Could you tell us a little bit about your role and how you work with Emmy? Yeah, of course. Um, hello, everybody. So I'm Jana, um, I'm head of um, Wunder Vehicles in Wunder Mobility. So I'm leading the vehicles unit um, within Wunder and taking care of the mission, uh, the vision, and also the unit strategy and product strategies. But of course, um, the relationship uh, to all the manufacturers and of, um, in special, the um, co-development partnership with Yadi in China. So to provide our clients with a um, all-in-one, so one-stop shop solution, we um, started to co-develop mopeds and also bikes with Yadi, the biggest light electric vehicle manufacturer in China. Um, so we are offering these vehicles um, from Yadi, um, which are perfect fit to the sharing market. They are based on B2C models um, and have a great price performance ratio um, with low maintenance and low operation costs. So um, I'm also taking care of all the um, logistics stuff with my team um, regarding to vehicles. And we also offer warehousing uh, if clients need it. So all the value added services um, to make our clients happy in terms of hardware deliveries and stocking for their fleet. Yeah, and this co-developed moped um, is running with Emmy since beginning of this year with 1,500 units in their fleet. And I'm really happy um, yeah, to talk today with Markus about this interesting topic. Great. Um, you mentioned a vehicle being a perfect fit for sharing. So maybe we can start with the basics. What actually makes a vehicle sharing ready? Yeah, so for my opinion, um, a light electric vehicle with a perfect fit to sharing market offers a high quality, very high reliability and a good resistance against vandalism. Um, in the way it's designed. So it should come out of the box like this. Of course, it should also have implemented an IoT device um, to make it smart and um, yeah, usable with an app. So mm -hmm. additionally, um, the, the vehicle should match the user needs, of course, because everyone uh, wants to um, make the users drive their fleet and not the other brands, of course. Um, so you have to consider a broad range of different user needs um, in terms of size of the user, weight of, this, of the user. Um, and yeah, to make this all together a perfect fit, we are developing um, our sharing vehicles based on all these insights. 
Um, and on top, I already told you in the beginning that um, it's always a good fit um, to choose a B2C moped or B2C vehicle um, because the B2C market is much more mature than the sharing market and taking one model um, from consumer market, which is already running in thousands of um, units, you can really benefit from all the stability from the production processes and can take this as a basis and um, yeah, make it a sharing ready vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and Marcus, from, from an operator perspective then, what kind of things do you look for in a sharing vehicle when you're choosing them for your fleet? So, um, yeah, there are really, really many um, parameters which you look like, um, but I will try to summarize the most important points up for you. Um, I guess a no-brainer is for sure the range of the vehicles itself. As higher the range, as lower the cost for each driven kilometer is. Um, so it's important um, because of one of the highest costs you have are the service costs. Um, in addition, a high range usually brings with it a high capacity of the batteries, which can increase the charging time or the needed power of the charger. Um, so you need to think about your charging infrastructure as well. Um, finally, you, you should um, ask yourself the following questions. Um, how much battery storage space do you might have in your charging points? Um, how much power consumption do the chargers have? And what is the maximum amount for each charging point? Mm -hmm. So this is a general question you need to ask yourself if you are um, observing a new um, vehicle type. Furthermore, you should know how often you must exchange batteries of your vehicle in order to ensure the maximum customer availability for each vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, based on this considerations, um, you can plan your shifts and the necessary service tools to achieve the most perfect level, I would say, between um, the service tour and the customer availability. Um, the next point you should think about is the design, as already mentioned by uh, as already mentioned by Jana, for the vehicle. Um, it should be noted that the sharing uh, use case always plays a high stress on the other components of the vehicle itself. So, especially. Uh, in the area of micro mobility and mobile sharing, I would exclude um, the cars of this route, of this role. Um, so, a well designed sharing vehicle can type over in the city without big damages. It can withstand vandalism to a limited extent, and it should be not immediately uh, a total loss in an event of a small um, accident. Um, yeah, which leads me, leads me to the next point, um, the maintenance. So a good, a really good um, sharing vehicle should be repaired and maintained under an hour. So no matter which components need to be repaired. This can yeah. save you a lot of cost and keep you, your availability of the vehicle at a high level for the customer without big, without big efforts. Um, to make this possible, of course, you need spare parts. So here too, um, the aim is to always have some availability. Therefore, you should also take a look um, at the delivery times of the spare parts and the supply chain of the manufacturer to decide um, which scaling you want, or better to say which scaling you need to use it um, for your order. Uh, this is also important regarding your running costs of the vehicle. So in the best case, you will have cheap spare parts and yeah, much low repair times, I would say. Um, moreover, the telematic unit is also a really, really important point as already uh, mentioned by Jana. Um, so you need to tell you the question or ask you the question, how looks the performance regarding the connectivity? So which kind of, um, SIM card are included in the telematic unit. Is this a mono SIM? Is this a dual SIM? Um, because of this fact, if you are only using a mono SIM card, um, and for example, Vodafone have a breakdown um, in the systems, your whole fleet is affected. So there's no way what you can do. You need to set offline your whole fleet until this issue is clarified by Vodafone. But if you use, um, for example, a multi SIM provider, 
then you, it doesn't matter which um, provider have problems at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What else? Um, yeah, uh, also important is um, the uh, API behind the, mm -hmm. behind the telematic unit. So which data you can got of the vehicle. Um, to give you ex an example, there are manufacturers which provide you besides the standard data like battery fuel level or location EPC, um, some events like a tip over or a shock state. With that, you are, can you can improve your operations work for sure. And for example, observe um, accidents or vandalism much better. So in the end, this is leading to a better visual look of your vehicles in the city. So if something, someone is um, walking around the city and see your vehicles, they are always in good conditions because you have um, something like an alert system in your in your uh, software mm -hmm. and make sure that they uh, always look good. And you have a positive awareness of your vehicles in the city, in the city which is, I guess, in the future, a big topic for all of, for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the last point, the last important point, I would say, um, is a low uh, purchases price so of the vehicle. So of course, the performance is always more important of the price or the price of the vehicle itself. But um, the lower one-time cost of your vehicle, as uh, the faster and easier you can reach your break-even. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors to consider. <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned uh, the purchase price and also the running costs. Um, it'd be interesting to hear about, I mean, there's a lot of cost drivers involved in a, in a sharing operator business. It'd be interesting to hear, you know, what roles vehicles play in the big picture. Um, Jana, maybe you could share a couple of insights on that. Yeah, of course. Um, so we already heard a lot uh, from Markus, which what is important in terms of the sharing vehicles. And um, to catch this up, so you heard about maintenance and operations costs and um, also the purchasing price. So I would say the purchasing price um, is roughly about 30% of the um, overall costs during a lifetime of a moped. So much more important than the purchasing costs with logistics and also custom clearance will be the operation and maintenance costs. So not watch only on the um, purchasing price, you always have to calculate the whole um, total cost of ownership for the moped or for the vehicle itself. So um, yeah, these daily operations and maintenance is about 70% in the lifetime of a moped from the total price. And by optimizing um, the vehicles and the costs which drives the operations and maintenance times, um, you can save a lot of money as an operator because um, you already heard from Marcos, if you have faster charging um, times, you um, need less time in operation. If you have a higher range, um, you don't have to collect or, or change the batteries uh, so often. And of course, if you have a longer, longer range and also um, a low charging time, you can also save space in your warehouse, in your garage, um, which is also a cost driver in the in the overall picture. So um, there's a lot to consider, but it's not only the purchasing price, it's more the optimization on maintenance, repair, and also yeah, the costs of, of the space you need for your daily operations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned that Emmy introduced uh, 1,500 new sharing ready mopeds um, to their existing fleet at the beginning of the year. Um, Marcus, have you seen some of these fact these cost factors that Jana has just mentioned? Have you seen those impacted um, by the by introducing these vehicles? Um, yes, for sure, because um, um, it's not even that the um, shift is easier to plan if you have lower um, charging time. It's also you didn't need to both um, so many batteries. So it, um, the hardware cost on the one time side is much lower because you have you need you didn't need a lot of buffer batteries to um, pre write um, the, the, the service for the whole fleet. So you need to think about okay, okay how many vehicles I have on the street in the city, what will be um, the trips per day. So you need to calculate it, um, how many swaps you need to, de to, you need to do to, per day. And, and therefore we seen with the ID, it's a really good um, yeah, vehicle for, for that. 
And as well, um, you need to think about how fast can I do a, a service at the scooter? So how fast can I swap the batteries and what I need to do at the scooter itself? And with the ID, it's quite easy. You have two ways um, to swap the batteries. One way is with the hardware. So just um, open um, the setup by the hardware um, or you open it with the software. So this is increasing. Um, we're decreasing our costs um, definitely on, on the server side. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the, um, the outer parts of the vehicles are very important. So for example, <clears throat> there are also vehicles in the market who are really well prepared for damages on the outer parts. Um, so they have, uh, so that the mopeds will only hit some, um, some other parts and not the plastic parts first when it hits the road. Um, the Yadi, for example, has very flexible plastic parts. There are also others in the market who offer the same. So um, that's also something uh, to consider because changing the plastic parts um, is the most um, most time-consuming um, repair, I think. So um, that's also another part to consider next to the swapping and uh, the charging times, I think. Yeah, that's totally uh, true. So um, the often didn't need to change the plastic parts of ERD. Um, so this is performance and the maintenance is quite good, I, I could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, and kind of a more, a more general question, I guess, what kind of challenges uh, might be faced when it comes to sharing vehicles? Um, Jana, I don't know if maybe you can share your thoughts on this. So challenges in terms of uh, vehicles, um, is of course find the right vehicle. Um, so I think it is always a hard decision for the operators. Um, and they always think, oh, hopefully I will do the right decision um, because it will influence my business. And it's a very um, high uh, investment, of course, but without hardware, without vehicles, uh, you have no operation, you have no sharing business. So it's not only the software. Um, and the challenges, yeah, is the, the decision taking, first of all. And of course, you have during these times, so the whole um, 2021, um, the electronic shortage, which is um, getting worse and worse, um, which yeah, causes higher delivery time, longer delivery times. And you also have um, lots of troubles in logistics. So most of the um, vehicles, light electric vehicles for sharing coming from China still, um, and you have a big container shortage. Um, you have lots of delays um, due to COVID um, in some ports, COVID in um, some manufacturing areas. Um, yeah, you, you need to prepare yourself very well and you need to order vehicles um, very yeah, soon um, as, so to have it um, for, the, um, for the next season. So I think yeah, one challenge is, of course, decision. Second one is as a whole electronic shortage in the market, which causes higher delivery times. And the third one is, of course, logistics. Mm -hmm. And um, Marcus, I guess these are <laughs> all topics that you've had to deal with <laughs> as well. Yeah, so um, I want to go a little bit more into the logistic part um, because this is always a bottleneck if you have a new manufacturer. Um, so as already mentioned by Jana, um, they are most manufacturers sitting in, in, in Asia. So um, you have always long delivery times. Um, you will always have um, yeah, high prices for this delivery. So you make your decision um, in which way you want to work it. So do you want to make an order on a yearly base or on a monthly base or on a quarter base? And also, you need to check what is the supply chain behind the manufacturer. So, which, which um, spare parts are always available, um, which are expensive, which are cheap, so that you can make maybe a ABC analysis um, of your stock itself, so that you only have a little bit expensive parts in your stock. And um, B is uh, to have a middle awareness of um, the standard parts and the lower price you can yeah, put for your, your um, whole storage. So this is, this is really important for, um, yeah, for the operation because without spare parts, you can't have a running fleet. So the service needs to be exchanged, some, some mirrors on the, on the streets or needs to repair um, smaller things. And um, 
yeah, as, as well, uh, with, without any spare parts, you can't do your maintenance in the garage. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, Jana, you um, kind of touched upon uh, influence of COVID on the on the legit or on the shipping on the logistics side. We did actually have a couple of questions about um, about that. So. Marcus, maybe more question for you. There was obviously a phase, um, a lockdown phase in Germany where, you know, customers were not using the sharing vehicles as much as usual. What does that mean on the operation side um, for you as an operator? <clears throat> so, um, as I told you before, um, we do forecasts for a lot of things. So we do forecasts for our um, service tours, we do forecasts for our spare parts. And this is related to our last years. So um, we have analyzed um, how many trips we have per day in which in which uh, weeks, in which months. So what is the main season in that? And uh, as always, we will prepare for the season in winter time. So as we was or as we was fighting doing to Corona, um, there was a lot of decreasing of our rides, but we had already prepared everything for for a normal season. So what we did um, is, um, or what we always did, not only do, doing to Corona, is um, that we optimize our service. And what we did was um, we improved our charging infrastructure. So we have a lot of different locations for our charging points overall in the city. Um, we created areas um, around this hubs, I would say, and to, to decrease the uh, driving distance between the scooters so that our employees have only short distance between the, between the uh, scooters and can yeah swap as much scooters as possible in one shift. This was one point. Um, the other point was um, that we yeah, stopped at least marketing. So a lot of projects was, um, was ongoing, but we need to stop it because in Corona, you didn't need marketing because all yeah, all guys uh, need to be uh, at home. And we also stopped our improvements. So improvements regarding the pro product itself, um, reworks of the whole fleet to reduce maintenance, something like that, that we did um, yeah, to cover COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, yeah, it's, it's always interesting to hear all of these <laughs> things that are happening in the background <laughs> that, you know, as a, as a user, maybe you don't, you don't think about or you don't see. The more I can use to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so great. I mean, our, our webinar is coming to an end now, um, but it's been really interesting to hear all of these insights uh, from you both. I think um, the Emmy success story is really interesting, especially when you look at it from a vehicle perspective. Um, and, you know, you've both raised some really good points, good insights about, you know, what makes a vehicle sharing ready, looking at things like battery time range and so on, how to, you know, optimize it to keep them on the streets and use them efficiently with the user base. Um, Yanni also, you know, talked to a lot about the costs involved um, and all these factors to consider that are not necessarily just buying the vehicle itself, but everything kind of that goes on behind that. Um, and all of these factors basically that we can think about to improve operational efficiency and therefore um, reduce costs. And I think Emmy is just a fantastic example of how that can actually work. <laughs> so yeah, thank you both very much for your insights. Um, we had a few questions in the chat, which we'll get back to after um, the webinar is over. And yeah, for all the viewers, the webinar will be available as a recording after um, we'll send it through to you. So thank you very much. And goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Marcos. Goodbye. Thank you very much.